Hi, this is Doc Mountain, and welcome you to my channel. In this video of today, I'm going to walk you a cup. I'm going to walk you through a couple of steps that you have to take for you to be able to solve any problems that have to do with linear equations involving brackets. Without any further ado, let's take a ride. Uh, so now, these are the the rules that you have to be acquainted with. For you to become more competent in answering any questions that has to do with linear equations with brackets. So the first row here. Okay, so the scenario is that you have a constant. This could be a constant. And then we have a sign here, which may be a minus. But in this case, you're looking at... Uh, a positive sign and then we have brackets uh, so now what you do is for you to expand the brackets you have to multiply this positive sign here on the outside of the brackets by everything that is on the inside of the brackets so that will be positive times b first of all uh you write this the way it is and we have that and then you multiply positive times b, and that gives you positive b. And then you multiply this positive sign by positive sign, which gives you positive. And uh, we're going to have a positive c there. That's rule number one. Now, rule number two, of course, this one here isn't, is, isn't complete. So we move on to rule number three. If you have a negative sign on the outside of the brackets, what you need to do is multiply that negative sign by all the elements that are on the inside of the brackets for you to expand the brackets. So this A will be written the way it is. And then you multiply negative times B that gives you negative B. And then negative um, positive, positive C that gives you negative negative c and that's what we have on the outside there okay let's let's take a look at this one here we have a it's written the way it is and then we multiply this so as to expand the bracket so we multiply this negative sign by all the terms that are on the inside of the bracket so negative times b that gives you a negative b and then negative times negative here gives you positive there and we write the c at the final so that's how you go about these things. Let's move on to the next slide so that we look at how we can solve problems now that have to do with uh, linear equations with one unknown variable and which has brackets. All right, so now the first one is saying solve for x in, in that uh, linear equation. So first things first expand the brackets so we're starting with this part then we move on to this part and then we work out things the way they have to be worked out uh, so here we are five times two x that gives us uh 10 x we're expanding the brackets then five times negative one that gives us negative five so we've expanded the first brackets. Let's move on to the second. So this negative will be multiplied by the negative there, uh, the positive rather. But we know there is, there is a number on the outside. So that's negative 2 times x. That gives us negative 2x. Then negative 2 times negative 2. So first of all, you, we multiply out the, the signs. Negative times negative, that gives us positive. And two times two, that's a four, which is equal to uh, what is at the far end will be written the way it is. Okay, so preferably, I, I love writing those terms with the x variable or whatever variable they have on the left hand side. Yeah, so depending on the, si the situation. Whatever you do is to work out as long as you do it correctly, but preferably 
I love having terms with the, with variables on the left hand side. So we have 10x here. We can shift the terms so that they happen to be in one place, especially those like terms. So this 10x is a like term to 2x. So we simply shift the 2x closer to 10x. So that will be, remember, as long as there is no equal sign, as when you shift the terms, they will maintain their signs. So that is minus 2x. And then we have this one as a constant, that one as a constant, that one as a constant. This one has a variable. Now we need to move it. So let me do this step by step. So now we have this one here. And then the next number is a constant, which is 5, then plus 4. But of course, I could have moved them to the other side of the equation. But I want to do this little by little so that you're able to follow through without any challenges. So the next thing that gives us, um, <clears throat> we have a seven there plus four X. We can shift this four X to the left-hand side, okay? But of course, these can be executed. These two as well can be executed. So let's do this. We have 10x minus 2x. That gives us 8x. Then these two as well have two different signs. So as long as they have different signs, we have to subtract them instead of adding. So we subtract a 4 from a 5, and then we get the sign from the 5. So that's minus 1. A, which is equal to 7 plus 4x. Okay, so now what we do is we have to move this 4x to the left-hand side of the equation. The negative 1 has to go to the right-hand side. So what we do is we have to bring in the additive in the sense of these terms that we want to shift. So knowing that this one is having a positive sign, we need to bring in its additive inverse, which is negative 4x. The reason why we're doing that is so as to eliminate that term from this side. So what we do on this side is what we should do even on the left-hand side. So that would be minus 4x. Then this one is negative 1. So the additive inverse of negative 1 is positive 1. And what we do this side is what we do even on the other side. We are adding a 1. So now, what are we going to have here? What we're going to have is, <clears throat> is this. Uh, let me write this here. So what we're going to have is these two will give us a 0. That's negative 1 plus 1. Since they have different signs, we're going to subtract them. So that will be a 0, meaning that we will eliminate this. So what we will end up with is 8x minus 4x, then an equal sign there. This side, this one, and that one will give us a zero because there's a positive 4x minus 4x, that's a zero. And then we're going to have 7 plus 1. We can execute the the operations which are I mean, of those terms, 8x minus 4x, that will give us 4x which is equal to 7 plus 1, that's 8. So we can now get rid of this one. But multiplying, so you have to multiply by the multiplicative inverse. But in this case, I'm going to just say I divide both sides by 8. So that 4 and that 4 will go, leaving us with x, which equates to 4 into 8. That's a 2. And we are done just like that. Let's move on to example 2. Uh, so if you haven't yet subscribed, I urge you to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that the next time I happen to post a video, you happen to be enlightened. Okay. And for the sake of just, you know, tracing the, the channel real fast with ease. Uh, so this one here, we will first of all expand the brackets, multiply the numbers which are on the, on the outside, the immediate outside of the brackets by everything on the inside. So this two would be multiplied by three, 
and the same two will be multiplied by one. Equally, the three will be multiplied by y, and it will be multiplied by one there. So two times three, that is six y, minus two times one, that's a two, which is equal to three times y, three y, minus three times one, that's a three. All right, so now what do we do next? <clears throat> We have this constant, which is a like term to that other constant there. So we can get rid of it by bringing in its additive inverse. So an additive inverse is the number which if added to another number gives you a zero. So when we add negative two to positive two, the answer is zero. So what we are going to remain with this side is six y, which is equal to, now what we did this side is what we have to do or what we should have done even on the right answer so we say plus two so here we we'll still have three y minus so this is minus three and that is plus two the signs are different now according to the uh algebraic laws as long as signs are different for the two terms that you want to execute you have to subtract so you subtract the two from a three and you get the sign from the three. So we're gonna have one. Now at this point in time, you have to realize that this three and the six y are like tens. So we have to get rid of this three y from this right side of the equation, and move it to the left side. And how do we do that? We bring in the additive inverse. So since it's positive, the additive inverse of three y will be negative 3y. So now if we are subtracting 3y this side, we have to subtract 3y even on the other side of the equation. So this one will give us a zero. And we're going to have 6y on the left side minus 3y, which is equal to, this is a zero, so we will remain with negative 1. So 6y minus 3y leaves us with 3y, which is equal to negative 1. The real math here is that since these two were multiplied, for us to get rid of a three so that we know the value of y, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by the multiplicative inverse. Now, so unlike an additive inverse, a multiplicative inverse will actually give you a one when you multiply it by the number to which it's a reciprocal. So if let's say we have a two, the reciprocal of a two is one over two. So that when you multiply out these two numbers, you're gonna have a one as a product. So two times one, that's a two, one times two, that's a two, two into two, that's one. So that's what the multiplicative inverse is or what it does. So in this case, if we now divide through there, that's a one, through there, one, so what we're going to re remain with is y, which is equal to what we did on the left side is what we then do on the right side. We are multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. So negative 1 times 1, that gives us negative 1. Introduce a 1 there, 1 times 3, that gives us 3. So that's the final answer. So the value of y is equal to negative 1 over 3. Now, at the bottom here, we have application. That's the work that you got to do on your own, uh, owing to the fact that you have actually seen so much. But before I leave everything to you, let's, let, me, let me try to help you with the first one so that I give you enough ink alteration. All right, so let's do this. That's uh, 2x minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 5x. What is it that we have to do here? Okay, so the first term has to be written the way it is, then minus. You're expanding these brackets by multiplying by what's on the inside. But what's on the outside of the brackets being multiplied by what's on the inside of the brackets. So negative 2 times x, that gives us negative 2x. The negative times positive, that gives us negative. And you're multiplying 2 times 1, which gives you a 2, which is equal to 5x. So 2x minus 2x, that gives you a 0. 
and you remain with a two. Now, the, 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 the mistake that most people make is they throw away this sign, forgetting that it's a, it's a sign that is attached to a number on the right. So don't throw it away. So that will remain as negative two, which is good to five X. And then uh, at this point, people get stuck. They use a two, which is on the left hand side, as the number that they have to divide both sides of the equation. You don't do that. You make use of the number which has a variable here because our interest is to know the value of X. So you multiply now both sides of the equation equation by the multiplicative inverse over five, which is one over five. Even this side, we multiply by one over five. So this side, this five and that five will divide and you're gonna have a one, one into one is one times x, x times one, that will be x. Then this side, what do we have? That's negative two times one, which gives us negative two over five. So I can say therefore, x is equal to negative two over five. If you want, I can give you enough in calculation. Uh, let's see if you're able to solve the remaining problems. That is number two, number three, and number four. Uh, when you're done, I want you to send the answers in the comment section on this um, video. So turn on the notification bell and subscribe so that you can easily trust this channel. Thank you so much for watching.